In 2023, as part of the IMO's GHG reduction rules, this will need to be addressed not only for new buildings but also for ships in service. The CII, a rating system for fuel consumption performance, has had a particularly large impact and is still the subject of much discussion. Furthermore, the issue of transboundary biofouling has become an issue as it has a significant impact on the marine environment, and the IMO has issued guidelines on the prevention of transboundary biofouling via ocean-going vessels, which are being implemented as mandatory legislation in some countries. Against this background, more stringent measures need to be taken to prevent biofouling. The contribution of marine coating manufacturers is becoming increasingly important. When biofouling occurs, it increases the roughness of the surface of ship's hull, affecting the vessel's performance. For example, the surface roughness of a new building ship after painting is around 100 microns, but when slime, a bacterial deposit, adheres to the surface, the surface roughness increases from microns to millimeters. As slime is a relatively loose deposit, it tends to gradually drop off as the ship runs, whereas algae and barnacles rooting in the hull can cause a roughness on the order of centimeters, greatly increasing the frictional resistance to seawater. This situation reduces the ship's speed and necessitates an increasing in the main engine power to maintain the ship's speed. This may lead to a deterioration in fuel efficiency and further increase GHG emissions. Due to the awareness of GHG emission reductions, IMO and GLOW Fouling have recently made efforts to disseminate information on the relationship between biofouling and GHG. This graph is an example, showing that GHG emissions tend to increase as biofouling progresses. Anti-fouling paints are expected to prevent biofouling on ships and minimize the increase in surface roughness, thereby maintaining the ship's original propulsive performance. The impact of biofouling on CRI was confirmed from actual bulk carrier service data. The blue line in this figure shows the results of the attained CII calculations obtained from the data of vessels in service within the first year. Biofouling is considered to be a less common situation within the first year after docking. Although ship speed effects are ignored in the CII calculation, KPM past propulsion performance analysis can estimate the attained CII figure for different ship speeds. If you look at the blue line, you need to voyage at approximately 30 knots or less to obtain a rating C. On the other hand, a red line was obtained when the attained CII was calculated in the service data for the year before the next dock. At the time of docking, the biofouling situation was worsening, as shown in the picture on the top left. As a result, it was estimated that the biofouling would reduce the CI rating by one rank. Here, biofouling can be expected to improve if products with excellent long-term anti-fouling performance are applied. Even in the period immediately prior to the next dock, it is expected that the attained CI will change to the red dotted line instead of the solid red line this means that attained CII are expected to be close to the blue line. Therefore, the probability of rating downgrades due to biofouling is expected to be lower. In early 2023, news circulated around the world that fourth cruise ships in New Zealand were forced to reschedule due to biofouling. If biofouling is not acceptable, how should we take precautions from now? continued in part two.